Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston, and today we're going to learn about this very basic sorting algorithm, which is the bubble sort. And uh, the bubble sort is one of those algorithms which, uh, you know, you have to go through every element in order to get to the next element. So it's composed of passes and accessing and traversing, accessing and traversing are the same thing, uh, every element in the array until you know that they are at the correct position. Um, it depends on the fact that you're going to check the first element, you're going to check the second element. And if the second element is bigger or smaller than the, than the first element, you're going to exchange them and then move forward, okay? So that's uh, how you're going to traverse every single, you know, element. So let's begin with it. The first thing we need is a, in the main function, I already made the class. So a public static void main string args and then you have okay so then we need an array so we're gonna start with an array int array simple enough equals new int and uh, instead of putting um you know a number or you know whatever over here i'm gonna put the variable max now what is max i'm gonna define it over here that is a static Okay, maybe I should put public or private. I guess private would be better. Private static final int max. Now, why do we have to put so many things? Basically, private means that it can be accessed by the class. I mean, the private. This is a private. Uh, you know, in C++, you have private and public. Private can be accessed by, uh, from outside. A uh, public can be accessed from outside the class, but private can only be accessed inside the class. It's similar to that. Then you have static. Static means it can be accessed by a class. That's it. Final, that means this value will not change. It's constant. And int, it's because it's an integer. That's about it. And now this is an array of 10 elements, which are probably going to be, well, some elements. So how, how, do, I, you, how do you plan to fill this, this array? Well, I want to fill it with random numbers. Okay? Random numbers. Now, this is, you, you're going to learn how to fill it with random numbers. Okay, let's get to it. So we need a for loop for int i equals zero. I less than max, obviously. I plus plus. And then we have to fill the array. Okay, so we go array i is equal to math dot random. Okay, now um, at the base, math dot random re returns a double value. And that double value is between the ranges of 0 to 1. Okay, you can try it out if you don't believe me. So in order to make this an integer, we need to cast it. Type cast. Int. So now we'll return an integer variable. But now what happens is that this, as I said, it returns a value between 0 and 1. So when you make it an integer, it becomes a 0. And you don't want that. And you want to map random number. So what you do is you multiply this by about 100. Or, you know, if you want a two-digit number, if you want a one-digit number, you multiply by 10. If you want a two-digit number, you multiply by 100. And if you want more than that, you multiply by 1,000 or 10,000 or million, whatever. I want a two-digit number, so I'm going to multiply with 100. And then we're going to print it out as, um, you know, as an array. System dot out dot print ln. No, no, sorry. No lns. I, I don't want it to go to the next line. You'll see why. Okay, okay, plus, okay, array of i. So let's just um, put this in four loops. Sorry, I, I think this should be over here. Yeah, it's the best place to keep it. Because, you know, once it goes, put the value over here, you can go here and print this thing, which is great. I mean, I don't mind any, you know. And similarly, we're going to put this over here. Control C, Control V. And here we're gonna put ln, and in here we're gonna say that's about it. Nothing. We, we're not gonna say anything, but you know, I like to say stuff like that. Anyway, now um, here I want to say something. That is the array to be sorted is. Now I know that this is not really required in anything. Like you know, if you're doing a bubble sort, you don't really need all this stuff. But it's just good to have. You know. I like to, you know, go through the previous steps in order to 
get to the meat of the tutorial. Now we get to the meat of the tutorial. That is the algorithm. So as I said, this just goes through every element in the array and checks it with the next element and sees if the next element is bigger or smaller than the previous element. And if it is bigger, it exchanges. Or if you want, if it is smaller, it exchanges. So it's gonna exchange every element like that. So let us go through that whole pattern. We go for int i is less than, sorry, equals zero, i less than 10, i plus plus. Then you go for int j is equal to zero, j less than 10, and j plus plus. If that's done, then you go to the next. And what you do is, now is the important thing. If array of j is greater than array of j plus one, then if it's greater, okay, if j is greater than j plus one, that means if the, suppose the f j is equal to one, if the first element that is j equal to one element, that is the second element basically because the array starts from zero. Ignore that. If j equal to one, the array of j is greater than array of j plus one, which is array of two. And if it is greater, then you exchange them. Okay, now how do you exchange them? Int temp, okay, equal to array of j. Now this is standard procedure. This is a very standard procedure. Array of j, you'll get it. If you have a piece of paper with you right now, Take it, draw boxes for temp and array of j and array of j plus one and see how that happens. It's very easy. You don't have to really think about it. You can even do this without uh, using the temp variable, but I find it very easy to do it with the temp variable. You know, whatever is easy, okay? In computer science, if it's easy, it takes memory. If it's not easy, it requires less memory. That's the rule. Most of the times, okay? Not, you know, don't take my word for it, but yeah. So yeah, that was it. That, that's the whole algorithm actually. So let us now uh, execute this and see what happens. Now, in order to print it, I'm just gonna copy this and paste it. This, uh, you know, because I'm a cheater. Not really, but you know, copy pasting is easy. It just saves you the trouble. And instead of this, we don't want this over here because it will replace it anyway. And the array to be sorted is. So now the sorted array is. We should write that there. The sorted array is boom boom and uh yeah let's execute and um yeah it, it uh, did exactly as i wanted it to do it showed me an exception error which tells me that i am going out of bounds now what does this exception mean it means that my variable here that is j and this whole thing is going out of bounds it means that if i have j equal to 10 Okay, if I have j, uh, the condition is j is less than 10, so, and j plus plus, so j's maximum value will be 9. Okay, now if j goes to 9, what will this be? This, this whole thing. This will be array of 10, but array of 10 does not exist, as we have only 10 elements in the array. Okay, and uh, the array starts from 0, so you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and there is no 10th part. So what did you do? Put 9 over here. Let go to nine. And yeah, as expected, the thing is complete. And we have a sorted scenes. Well, not all sorted scenes. We have sorted scenes. The area has been sorted literally, quite literally. And uh, yeah, that's how the bubble sort works. And uh, you must be thinking, why does uh, we why, why do we use two for loops? Why can't we just do it one? Actually, every pass, okay, every pass, is inside this for loop and this will be the new pass like this will be for the elements and this will be for passes so for every uh, pass you have 10 element extra interchanges we don't have literally 10 interchanges it's just the worst case scenario it's like if you have one pass in the worst case scenario you, you'll have 10 exchanges so you need at least not 10 I guess 9 exchanges yeah 9 exchanges so you need at least that that much of you know competence so that's why we use this now there are other methods in order to you know optimize the bu bubble sort but I don't think I need to tell you them right now uh, we'll do that later and uh, yeah that's about it this is the very basic bubble sort thank you for watching